happy springtime everyone i hope you're all excited about the first week of spring i know i sure am i actually have my happy floral backdrop in there i know not everyone is a fan of this backdrop um it is a little bit much but I really enjoy it and it makes me really happy to put it up and I think it really matches today's weather. We're finally getting some sunshine streaming through the windows and I'm in a good mood. So I thought that we would do a perfume collection video and that um, you know, if you have recommendations or suggestions or your own perfume collection video, leave it as a video response because I have been really getting into perfumes and fragrances lately, especially within the past six months. And I realized now I have quite an accumulation of them. In fact, originally I was actually going to do a very comprehensive sort of video telling you all the different notes for each one, but I realized that just wasn't going to happen in one video given the amount of items I have to show. So therefore, unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to you know, hold one up, tell you the name really quickly and then move on. I will do some honorable mentions and also talk a slightly more in depth about my top favorites. Um, if you're looking for um, review videos on any of these perfumes that you will see coming up, definitely just leave me a comment and let me know. I do have a couple of reviews already up. I do perfume reviews on my blog rather than in video format because I think it works better that way. So let's get going then with my very first one. Um, this is the the Kate Moss by Kate Moss, one of her originals, actually her very first perfume. And I do think this is a great one with a lot of personality that is sexy in, in a different way than a lot of the other sort of fro-fro, feminine, girly perfumes. Um, this to me is ever so slightly medicinal, but not in a bitter way or at all. Um, this smells a little bit like an a floor apothecary, if that makes any sense. This is very Kate Moss on her off days, Pemberton Festival, mud on her rubber boots or Wellingtons, I think they're called, you know, short shorts, tank top, that type of thing. I think it really embodies her aesthetic. And this is great for the type of girl that is a little bit more biker chick, rock and roll, a little rough around the edges, but still very sexy. Um, I think this is a great scent. Not when I wear very much when I'm out with the BF because he doesn't like this but I do, so I wear it when I'm by myself, kind of. The next one I have is my Harajuku doll. I believe this is the Wicked wicked Lover or Wicked something, Little Angel. Um, this is a gift from the BF, so it has more sentimental value than anything else. In terms of the scent, it's too much champagne in here. Not my personal favorite, but I do keep her on my vanity for that purpose, just because it was, you know, a great gift. Next one is something I think that you guys will enjoy if you're looking for a budget alternative to the other sort of slightly glamorous office wear type of fragrances. This is Baby Fat um, Goddess perfume. Now, first of all, love the bottle. This was the original. I know they came out with different versions that are gold and black and all different types of um, color combos. But I think this is a very sophisticated, um, office appropriate type of scent that really surprised me. You know, it has a certain um, understated glamour to it and I think it's wearable. It's nice, but again, not a personal favorite. Next is FC UK and um, from the brand FC UK and this perfume is called Friction. I mentioned it in one of my previous favorites videos. I think this is a great um, lush tropical type of perfume, not too sickly sweet, mixed with a great coconut base and um, some warm vanilla in there as well. For those of you guys who are afraid to get into fruity fragrances, this is a great one and especially those who don't like tend to like coconut. I was really surprised about how much I love the coconut twist in this perfume so a great spring and summer one um fc uk next one is from victoria's secret this is the pink sunny and happy body splash this was also a gift unfortunately it's not a favorite of mine either i think it's just too strong it's too complicated it's too messy and um, there isn't a good blend of all the different notes in there when you spray it i just feel like i got run over by a fruit truck so Definitely not um, for personal wear, but I think sprayed onto beach towels or other objects. It does, you know, smell kind of fun and fresh. So it is an okay one, but not my favorite, definitely. The next two came in my Luxe box. The first one is the Yves Saint Laurent Parisian Perfume, also marketed by Kate Moss, actually. This is a true berry perfume if you love berries because berries tend to get lost very easily when mixed with other fruits. And um, this is a great one. You can tell the berry 
It definitely stands out, yet it has a certain complexity to it that isn't just a flat out berry note. So a very sweet one, but not a personal favorite of mine. I'm not too much into the fruit side of things. This is the um, Paco Rabanne Black XS. This is the female companion. There's a male version, which, come, which comes in a lighter type of bottle. I thought that was kind of cool. Give that one to the BF. This also came in a previous Lux box. Now this, um, I would put it in the same or similar category as the Kate Moss, but this is more like a men's cologne. If you're the type of girl that likes to borrow your guys, you know, sweatshirts, tanks, whatever, and, um, you know, wear his cologne once in a while, sort of a unisex scent, I think this one would be a great choice. Still very sexy, but not... Not very feminine, I wouldn't say. It just seems a little rough in that sense. Um, not a bad choice, just not my choice. All right, moving on, fast, fast. This is the Marc Jacobs Daisy. You guys probably heard about this. Um, lots of people's favorites. However, this is not my favorite. It is a very happy-go-lucky type of scent, and I do think that it makes a great gift if you're unsure of what the other person would like. This doesn't lean too extreme in any direction in terms of fragrances. It is um, categorized as a fruity floral and it isn't too overwhelming. Picks you up, you know, lifts your spirits, very happy type of summer fragrance. I do think this is a good one. It's just not the best one or nor would it be a signature fragrance for me anyways. So Daisy by Marc Jacobs. The next one is a new addition. It, this is the DKNY Red Delicious. Um, I just purchased this a couple of weeks ago. Now this is my favorite out of all all the DKNY apple ones. I'm not into the really tart um, sort of apple crisp scents, but I think this has a floral twist to it that makes it a lot more interesting for me to wear. Um, it isn't too complicated. It is just a little bit different, I think, and warmer than the original apple ones. So the DKNY Red Delicious is was a limited edition item, but you still may be able to find it. Um, moving on, I also have the Very Hollywood by Michael Kors. Trade in sub Sephora points for this. Not very interesting to be honest. Um, it's glamorous in an understated type of way, but it isn't special. It doesn't have the extra sparkle. It doesn't intrigue me. It's just nice. I will put it in a similar category as the Daisy by Marc Jacobs. Um, I also have here, this is a real special one. This was discontinued I believe unfortunately. This is Truth by Calvin Klein, one of my ultimate favorites from the brand. I think better than Obsession, Euphoria, whatever, all those other ones that they have. Truth I think is classic Calvin Klein from the 90s, minimalistic, powerful, worthy of a signature, has a lot of presence, yet um, isn't in your face. It's just a solid, um, beautiful fragrance. This one has bamboo, wet woods, white peony, vanilla, white amber, sandalwood, lily, and clover. Very common type of scent. Does have, you know, a certain strength um, and sort of lingers on your skin nicely, I would say. Um, this is probably not for someone very young. I don't think they would very much enjoy this. They will likely enjoy something a little bit more fruity or more out there. But for those of you that are a little bit older and do want something understated and minimalistic, just like Calvin Klein's designs, I think this is a beautiful one, truth. Um, to try out. Next is a very bad choice, so I'm not even going to say too much about it. This is Fancy by Jessica Simpson, one of my blind buys, and um, horrible choice because this is caramel and amber and apricot, but way too much caramel. If you do love caramel scents, you will like this one, I'm quite certain, but to me, this is just knock me over the head. I was KO'd within the first like three minutes of spraying this, so not a fan of this at all. Next is um, one of my personal favorites. This is the Juicy Couture by Juicy Couture, one of the originals. I think this, I would put this in the same category actually as the Marc Jacobs Daisy. They have that same fresh, uplifting, youthful feel to it. I know that Juicy Couture is marketed towards a younger demographic overall. However, there's no reason that you can't wear it if it just makes you feel good. And this is one of those perfumes that lifts my mood and just always makes me feel happy. So I love this one. It contains watermelon, mandarin, pink passion fruit, green leaves, water, hyacinth, marigold, as well as tuberose, lily, wild rose, caramel, powdery vanilla, creme brulee, patchouli, and woods. Now the really strong scent in here is definitely the tuberose and it just, it's so dreamy. I think tuberose is such a beautiful scent. Um, white florals are my absolute favorite. So this is one of my go-to perfumes all year round, especially during the daytime. I wear it because it makes me feel happy and I think it's a very likable type of fragrance. Definitely a personal favorite. 
Next is um, something that I guess an honorable mention. This is L de Lolita Lempica by Lolita Lempica. This is mysterious, um, flirty, mischievous, and feminine yet with a twist. It contains immortal notes, which is a very sweet type of flower, but they balance it out with a kick of cinnamon. And although I'm not a spicy fragrance type of girl, I can appreciate this. And I think it is a very worthy fragrance. If you're looking for something different than your average um, heavy floral. So that's a great one from Lolita Lempica. And the next one I have is again very popular. I'm always afraid of smelling like five minute other women out there because again, when I choose popular fragrances, I wanna think, gosh, I wanna run to someone that smells exactly like me. That's not what I'm going for here. This is Sexy Little Things Noir, but I love this. I think this is so beautiful. It's one of the more complex fragrances that Victoria's Secret has, better than anything that I had tried from VS. When I think iconic Victoria's Secret Angel, this is what I think about. It's very um, flirty and sexy, but not trying too hard. And yet it has, you know, all the different notes are blended in perfectly, so it doesn't just all come out at once. Um, I'll let you know what is in here. There is nectarine, apple, citrus, pear, red berries, bergamot, as well as orchid, lily of the valley, jasmine, blackberry, plum, vanilla, currant leaf, golden amber, velvety musk, wood, and tonka beans. So beautiful, beautiful blend. Very just makes you feel good and powerful and really flirty and just happy. So I love this one, Sexy Little Things Noir. Um, it's not available here in Canada, unfortunately, as at least not as far as I know, so I do have to get mine from the States. Now, last one is a beautiful one. If I had to just choose one fragrance for the rest of my life, this is what I would choose. This is Samsara by Guerlain. Now, some people might think it's dated. They might think it's too old lady. It's just boring or too heavy. This is an oriental fragrance, which that does tend to be on the heavier side of things. However, um, it is a personal favorite of mine. I think it either works for you or it doesn't. Now the notes in here are bergamot, lemon, liang liang, peach, green leaves, jasmine, iris, narcissus, violet, rose, sandalwood, vanilla, tonka bean, amber, and musk. If you were to just simplify this, I would say you get jasmine, you get sandalwood, and you get um, amber and musk amber and musk mixed in together and I think it's a very it's a very powerful fragrance but not in your face it's powerful in an understated way it's very sensual not quite sexy but sensual and um, I think it's absolutely beautiful it is my personal favorite it is the only fragrance I paid full price for and I do not regret because it's worth every single penny and more so that wraps up my um, perfume collection I hope you found something that you enjoyed and something that sparked your interest again if you are interested in a um, review for anything leave me a request down below and I can certainly do that for you otherwise thank you so much for watching my video I hope that you had lots of fun and enjoy your day see you next time bye bye